Oh, hey guys, it's Zach Johnson, also known as the Millennial Farmer. You might recognize me from other things such as being an adult man with a weird YouTube obsession or being the creepy guy who stays at the local bar way too late on a school night. Anyway, when I have a tough job that needs superior performance, I use WD-40 Specialist True Multi-Purpose Grease because it's tough enough for me and strong enough for my deer. That made sense, right? It kind of, it kind of. In all seriousness, guys, this video is sponsored by the WD-40 company. If you are a fan of my videos, then I suggest you support WD-40 because they support me. Here's where we're at. We went out and tested a couple of fields yesterday. We tested our two driest corn fields. They're at about 23, 24, 25% moisture, which is not bad, really, for us. Normally we would take at that, but it's only September 24th and this would be by far the earliest that we have ever combined corn in this area for us. So we're not in a hurry. We're gonna let that stuff dry down. We're going to uh, just give it a little bit of time and quite honestly, we're just not quite ready. Uh, we've got some work to do on the bins over there. We got a few things to get ready and a little bit more work to do on the combines yet. Jim is out running truck right now. He's delivering the last few loads of corn we've got. We did end up getting that power sweep fixed in that bin. So we're gonna try and empty that today. We're gonna put some new batteries in the W900 here, probably change the oil, finish getting the combine ready. We got all kinds of stuff we gotta do around the yard today and tomorrow in order to try and get ready for harvest here. Typically we start on soybeans first. Uh, that's almost always what we do, but this year for some reason our soybeans are slow. I think we're probably gonna dive into corn first. You ready? I think so, try it here. Let's see. Hold on, hold on, I got the wrench on there. There we go, now try it. <clears throat> try loosening it. We got a bolt it. cutter. And we're dealing with some real Minnesota corrosion. The other thing, we have to take a grinder with a cutting wheel and try and cut it off. That's not going anywhere. Whenever using a cutoff wheel next to a bunch of batteries on a truck, it's important to wear safety glasses. The batteries are out. Dad's headed to town to grab a new set of those. I'm gonna climb in the bin, load another truck for Jim. curious about what was broken on this power sweep it was actually the main bearing underneath the gearbox so we did have to pull the gearbox out send that in have it rebuilt put the bearing and the gear back in there then we put a brand new chain on everything looks good now we actually had the bin crew fix that because we were so busy with everything else so they were out here maintaining some stuff on the dryer we told them go ahead take a look at this and whatever needs to be done get it done Exactly a super fun job. truck's full. Jim should be back before too long to take this one in. Wonder if dad's back with those batteries yet. Nobody's back yet. That means I'm actually gonna have to do some work here and clean out this dryer shack. This is where the main controls are for uh, basically this whole setup during harvest. We had a little bit of an issue this spring. We had a wood chuck go underneath here and dig some tunnels underneath everything. I've plugged a bunch of the holes but unfortunately he made a heck of a mess in here. 
we don't exactly spend a lot of time in here unless it's harvest. So uh, that's why I haven't armor all my chair lately. I'm just going to shovel as much of this gravel as I can out of here and bring it back outside to plug all the tunnels they opened up. For those of you wondering what happened to the woodchuck, let's just say he passed away recently. Oh, look at that. I get to go back inside of a grain bin. Change of plans. The new batteries are here. Batteries are mostly in. Dad's gonna finish those off while I take this truck, put a little fuel in it, and then load this one back up for Jim. No, we don't put the red diesel in our trucks. This is why we can't have nice things. Sometimes you spend too much time in the pin without checking the truck. And things happen. As a millennial, there's got to be somebody I could blame that on so that I wouldn't actually have to take responsibility for my own mistake. I'll think about it over lunch. Whoa. What's for lunch, Isla? I got one for you. You got a piece of cheese for my sandwich? All right, put it on there. Give me five. Yeah. All right, Dad is back there loading up that next truck for Jim. I'm gonna be working in the shed here, working on the 9650. I got the header all ready to go. Now we gotta go through the machine. We really haven't done anything with this machine since we washed it last fall after we got done using it. So I'm gonna go through and grease it, take a look at all the belts, the pulleys, the tires, everything I can take a look at. I'm not a John Deere mechanic, but uh, we're gonna check this thing out as best we can. You are going faster. All right, I'm just gonna take a look inside here at the grain augers. Kind of grab everything, make sure the bearings feel good. Also take a look at the chaffer and the sieves. Just kind of inspect the insides here. We don't put a ton of hours on this machine every year. So getting a super high-end, super technical service to it every year is not extremely critical. Actually, uh, we changed oil on it um, last year and it's only got about 50 some separator hours on it, around 100 engine hours, but we're not going to have to change oil on it. So I'm just going through everything real lightly and uh, making sure things look good here. It's time for me to come over to the grease map now and uh, throw some grease at the left side of this machine. Harvesting soybeans is a pretty demanding task. It demands a really, really tough grease. So for this job, I like to use WD-40 Specialist Superior Performance True Multi-Purpose Grease. My Lumax 12 volt handy luber is actually empty on grease. So I'm gonna take the old cartridge out of here and then slide the new tube in. All right, 
Let's go bleed the air out of this thing. One thing that Deer does that is really, really nice is they put this grease zerk map on the machines. So you can kind of locate all of your main grease zerks rather than having to remember all of them. I like to use this chart. Some people will make fun of me for it, but I like to use it as a reference to make sure I get around to all the important zerks. <laughs> Load five is back. The good part about living in the shop is when I put my boots on, I'm already at work. The bad part is, when your wife's got lasagna going in the crock pot, it makes your workspace smell very tempting. Oh, I can't even drill it. Oh, She's all greased, Jim got the wheel stud out. Now it's time to do the messy job. Spilled a little bit. I'll call the EPA about that in the morning. I don't know if it's too full. You don't want it. Oh, yeah. Gigi, mama. Well, she's all greased, tires are checked. Fuel filters are changed, chains are lubed, headers ready to go, engine oil's good, knives look good, chaffer looks good, sieves look good. I think uh, we're gonna go combining. The only thing we got left to do is fix that last stud that Jim broke. I'm gonna blame that on him. Then we're gonna throw a couple of computers in it tomorrow, back it out, bring the other one in here and finish off the 9870. So I'm done for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.